that was massive, like overhead. What a disaster. Don't park your freaking dinghy too close to the surf break. Mine, 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 mine. This is so cool. I can't believe we've already seen a croc. Let's find another one. There's uh, jaguars and pumas. I can't believe what we just saw. The wildest Costa Rican coastline ever. I've always wanted to do something like this. This is the life we all want. The coolest place, <laughs> the coolest people. What? It's one of the biggest houses I've ever seen. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Are you excited to have your new board back? Yeah! Got them repaired in Tamarindo. My Tropics board. This brand new one that they made for me in Bocas del Toro. Came out of the rack here and smashed the tail on the deck. It's a lot of glass work and I know you guys are going to be ashamed of me. But I paid someone to fix it. 200 bucks, three boards. Not bad. We were having a great time surfing when all of a sudden a huge set wave came and just like that, a buddy boat was faced with a horrible situation. Oh shit, what a disaster. Don't park your freaking dinghy too close to the surf break. So Trevor's dinghy has a center console with a 30 horsepower four stroke engine on the back. So it wasn't so simple trying to right that thing in the water. Come a little bit. Okay. okay. Whoa, whoa, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now we can flip. Max out. Okay. Um, now if we jump on the other side. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. So we went to go for a surf this morning and Trev parked his dinghy and then the set came and it was massive, like overhead. And it just came in and there were like four waves in the set and then I saw the first one and I was like, the first oh one shit. Just missed. I was the closest one to the dinghy so I just started paddling my ass off and I was about three meters away and then the last wave of the set just picked the, picked the dinghy up and just fucking threw it and then it was upside down. I jumped off my board and then I think the, the anchor, the, the, the anchor rope just went straight through my board because there was so much pressure on the dinghy because the anchor was still down. Right. You put the odds on being at sea for two, for two years, running a dinghy into the surf zone and that? Yeah. What, what are the odds? We did exactly the same thing in play over now. And the tide's coming down, so as the tide comes down, the waves are breaking further out. But even if I had got on, I would have had to like start it and then motor ahead. That, that set, it, it was going to take that dinghy no matter what. And then the swell of the waves were pushing us towards the beach. So we pulled the pulled the anchor up, put it on the dinghy, and just like swam it. And there's one local boat here, and we we're whistling and yelling out for him to come help us, but he wouldn't come because it's not his it's not his panga. So he didn't want to like risk going into the surf after seeing what just happened. So I kind of understand, but at the same time, when you see someone in distress like that, you should make more of an effort to help, I believe. So here it is. We've just rinsed it down with fresh water. Gotta start making sure there's no water inside that engine. Battery's working, all the electronics, even the bloody chart plot is working. This thing was underwater for a good 15 minutes. Yeah. More. Oh, the engine is full of water, that oil, the oil level would be right to the top. Have a look at it. It's nice, it's just perfect. Trev's just taking the Spark plugs out. I went and dropped Brittany over at the surf. Any water come out? Uh, no, I didn't see any. We're just saying, when it flipped upside down, it might have just been a big air pocket inside the engine because the oil level hasn't come up. You know, the oil would be sitting on. <laughs> Almost fell in the water. The oil would be sitting on top of the water, so the oil level would be. There is? Yeah, yeah. Just took the little you get it air box off. It's full of water in there, so. I want to start it now and suck all of that into the engine. Okay, 
that's your filter. It's just got to get dried out. Okay, now we got a bit of a bit of oil coming out the mm. carb. Yeah, that's from being upside down. Yeah. It's not so good. I just I disconnected the fuel line. I think we get it spinning and see what comes out of these chambers. By the way. I have no idea how the battery, ignition, and starter motor was still working at this point. We've got water coming out of one cylinder. That's turning over nicely though. Pretty much all the water has come out of that one cylinder. I think we'll put the, put the sparks back in and fire go. it up and it needs to run, needs to get hot, needs to get that oil circulating again. Yeah. Right, let's fire this thing up. I think it's important to get it hot and get that oil circulating around. So, should we put it in the water? It's gonna start. What? Come on, baby. There we go. Now she's got water. Not again. <laughs> this had nothing to do with all the wine that we had last time. No, cab sav and a Merlot cab sav. Here we go. He says he's gonna get three from three. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Purring away. It's running like a dream. The key things were that we got it running almost immediately. It wasn't sitting around with salt water in it. I think the starter motor needs to come completely apart because that thing had water running out of it. And then uh, an oil change and it's good. We're at Ollie's Point and we're just gonna go up the river mouth. Because when I threw the drone over, I could see a big lake there. It looks like there could be like crocodiles and stuff in there. I'm a little bit worried about the um, entrance of the river because I can see waves breaking into it. I think we've flipped enough dinghies for one day, so we'll take it easy. That was the easy part, getting in, getting out through there. Oh, this is nice. Look. There's one right here. We just came in. It's got its mouth open. So sketchy. I let the dogs run on this beach at one time. He's just put his hand on them. Are you kidding me? They're not even in the river yet. Right or left? Let's just go where the current takes us. This is so cool. I can't believe we've already seen a croc. Let's find another one. This is so sick. We're just letting the current take us up this river looks really deep water's not clear though so the other side of here is the surf spot this place is massive it's just at the bottom and it's rocky i'm not getting in this water <laughs> let's have a walk over the hill here okay that's good no crocs no crocs ollie's point only works at low tide and it's dead high now that's why we're up the river so you can't see any waves there's some tracks here I've, there's no dogs here but there's uh, jaguars and pumas. I wasn't oh. expecting to come this far up the river. Got less than a quarter of a tank. She'll be right. That's why we bought a radio. My idea. It was Trevor's idea. We weren't going to bring a radio at all. Just saw another one. Um, but I was, we were motoring. We come around this corner, and it uh, and it just went below the surface right here okay so that river mouth where we came into here had like the shallow sandbank and the tides really starting to go out now we can, we can see the water heading back out to sea and we've come far up this river so I guess we have to head back so that we can make sure we get out plus we don't have much fuel so tempting just to keep going but that wouldn't be smart so we hightailed it out of there before the tide got too low when all of a sudden what the hell we were just flying back and this bird just flew into this branch fell in the water and disappeared right here that guy's crock food for sure i can't believe what we just saw <laughs> he literally hit the tree fell in the water disappeared and this thing was like this but he was he was we were, we were following him for ages he was flying so nicely look how, look how fast the current's going out now we got to go so we're at the river mouth this is right where we saw that first crocodile. The tide's gone out, we can see a huge rock right in the middle of the river mouth. Man, we just ran out of battery right at the end. That was insane, man. We just saw like four crocodiles. 
went right up the river. It is incredible up there. So wild. We were worried. I thought something had gone wrong. I was like starting to panic because it's out going tight and fuck your yokes because I radioed and I, no comms obviously up there. So shit, I was getting worried. There you go. Just epic. What a day. We've had the dinghy flip. We've had a shark come swim straight towards us. Now we've had crocodiles up the river at Ollie's Point. The wildest Costa Rican coastline ever. So cool. The next morning we went for one more quick surf when some of our other friends popped into the anchorage. You can't pull it out? Okay, we're... you might need to move forward just a little bit so we can get it up. Okay, we're leaving now anyway. Alright, sweet. It was good fun. What's firing this morning? Well, that was super fun. All, all the um, surf charter boats left. And it was just me, Simon and uh, Gigi came out in the end. Such an unreal spot. So caught up with Max. Remember Max? He was with us in uh, the Sandblast Islands. Well, we've been seeing him all over the place and he just happened to be here. And um, I guess we're going in the same direction. And we're sailboats. So I guess it's a race. He doesn't know it yet, but uh, that's what's happening. Max, you want a race? <laughs> Let's go. So once we come around this rock, we'll put the headsail out and then we'll be racing. See the headsail's just luffing right now because we're, we're all pointing straight into the wind. Look at that headsail. Their headsail's like twice as big as their main. This is classic advantage of a monohull over a cat. He's able to point higher into the wind. I can't even get around this bloody headland right now. He's got the right of way right now, but I'm not going to move. <laughs> Max was able to go to windward of us and was sailing closer to the wind, so managed to take the lead. Well played, Max. Well played. So yesterday we started having um, a problem with the AC power on the boat, and it said that the inverter had shut itself off. So I've just come down here to investigate it. So we just stopped using AC power yesterday, but I, I need to run the water maker. Um, so I started running the water maker and it shut down again. But I came down and I started like feeling how hot cables were getting. And I noticed that the cables going into the switch which goes to the inverter were super hot. Super hot. I've just taken it apart and it's gotten so hot that it's melted underneath that connection there. But it went crack and now there's something rattling inside it. This switch is rated to 300 amps at a maximum of 48 volts and we would it's not even possible for us to put 300 amps through this switch so i've just completely removed the cable and i'm going to put a new one there just in case there's a bad connection with one of these lugs or something that's causing it but i feel like this old switch uh it's just it's, it's faulty so i'm gonna luckily i got a spare one I'm gonna hook the spare one up and then I'll run the water maker again and just feel everything, see if it's getting warm or. Shouldn't even get warm. This is one op cable, which is rated to 300 amps as well, over such a short distance. So, I would kind of be happy right now if, if that was the problem and it wasn't uh, something else to do with the wiring. So, huge fire hazard, man. That's fucking melted. New cable there. I'll reconnect the inverter. This is where the batteries go. That's where the inverter goes. And then I'll turn it on and then run the water maker. And maybe even the induction cooker or something at the same time, really put some load on this and see if anything gets hot. So we're pulling 1100 watts, nothing major. Everything seems to be okay. So I'll go down and see if that's getting hot. If it's not getting warm at all, I'll fire this thing up as well. That'll take it up to about 2000 watts or two kilowatts and then we'll monitor that it's getting a little bit warm to be honest We've got an issue somewhere else Maybe one of these cables maybe. sorry about the engine noise we're motor sailing right now but i've replaced the little switch it's not even that little it's a 300 amp switch with a slightly bigger 350 amp switch and we're pulling 2000 just over 2000 watts now and it's like it's warm so it's 
way cooler than it was. I've also doubled up the cables going from the main bus to the switch. So there's double cables from the inverter and then double cables to the, um, the main bus. So that might be helping a little bit, not sure. For now I'm happy with this because it's, it's, it's just warm to touch. That's not a worry at all. It's definitely not a fire hazard. So we're at the bar yesterday and uh, a couple ran up to me. Oh, my nose is peeling. You see that? Too much sun. And they uh, recognized me from the YouTube channel. Um, they said they're fans of ours and we invited them over to our table and we ended up having a few beers and they were just super lovely. They're a family, there's seven of them. And we ended up hanging out with them and uh, the, the main guy, Nick, who we're chatting with, said it would be an absolute dream come true if he could come on parlay so we're gonna go for a little sunset cruise pick up the whole family have a couple of beers sail around flamingo um and it's also kayla's last night she's leaving tomorrow and she's been awesome so gonna miss her a lot how was your time on parlay it was really good like actually life-changing i've always wanted to do something like this and then it finally happened and everything just came together so well i learned some sailing basics and i got to work on my surfing you meet some good people yeah <gasps> your last anchor kayla yeah i'm so sad Hi. Hi. Oh, guys, this, this green mat, mat is the dog toilet, so okay. don't, okay. don't fuck you in on it. Alright, no stepping on the dog toilet. <laughs> What's up, brother? Good to see you. How you doing? Well, uh, this boat is beautiful. This is the best ending to our trip. Yes. Yeah. Last day. Yeah. About to see the world in action. What we can be. Life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for oh, Be free with me Be free So we're nearly back at the anchorage now the, Our friends are having turns driving the boat They're just so stoked It's just so nice to just see the smiles on their faces When they're, they're driving parlay Like they're, they're loving it what a cool experience, and they're having a blast, and that's just brings so much joy to my heart to be able to do this for other people. It's cool. It's what it's all about. That's Dallas. The OGs. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. Such a fun cruise. This is the life. This is this is the life we all want. The coolest place. <laughs> the coolest people. How was your last sail on Parley? So good. Not bad Amazing. way to send you up, huh? Yeah, that was the best sail we've had all month, so it was really good. What's What's happening now? Going to the fire. What fire? At a mansion. What mansion? A mansion of the people that came on the boat. They've invited us over for pizza and some beer and a bonfire and a jacuzzi and a swimming pool and a... What a... Hot tub. So, we're gonna go. Hey. What the... Hello. We're at the castle. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What the fuck is this place? What? It's one of the biggest houses I've ever seen. Apparently we've got to check out this bathroom. This place is massive. But apparently it's only four bedrooms, so the bedrooms must be huge. Holy yeah. shit, yeah. yep they are. Are you kidding me right now? What? Are you kidding me? This house is huge. Come to my house. I live here. MTV Cribs. What's the bed test? <laughs> this is just the balcony of one of the rooms. There's another one that way. Bed test, no arms. <laughs> the best bed in the whole house. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It was great to make some new friends and spend some time in a house, which we don't get to do very often. And what an impressive house it was. So we're just watching this. We're gonna say beautiful, peaceful sunset, and there's these party boats just turning up. <laughs> um, with Simon and Gigi, it's their last night. They're leaving very early in the morning. They've been here for a short time, but a very nice time. 
Yeah, thank you guys. Like, really, that was a blast. Yeah, awesome experience, awesome crew members, awesome captain. Lots uh, of laughs, lots of great moments. Like, we couldn't ask for better. So Simon and Gigi are going back to Switzerland for a little bit, but then back to Japan where they're living. Um, they have a, a lodge in the mountains. So if you guys love snowboarding, skiing, powder riding, just come to visit us. I'll leave a link in the description below. So this is their logo, Kodama. And the two like kanji, so the Chinese character is for like tree and spirit. So Kodama means like the spirit of the trees. There you go. On the stick wall. <laughs>